Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Print It here. In today's video, I'll cover part two of my series on an introduction to Flask Babel. So in the first part, I covered how to format dates and numbers. In this part, I'm going to show you how to use locales more uh, directly and how to use translations. So the first thing I need to do is import from Flask Babel. So from Flask underscore Babel, import Babel with a capital B. And then I'm going to add some configuration just for the defaults. So in this case, I want my defaults locale. So Babel defaults locale is going to be equal to Ian. And then I'll instantiate the app. So Babel is Babel app. So now what I want to do is I want to use this object that I just created to figure out what the locale is. So there are ways to figure out the locale. So I'll define a function here, I'll call it get locale. And I'm going to return, for now, just English. And really, the one of the best ways you can figure out the locale is by using something from request. So let me import request. And what you can do is you can use request.accept languages. So accept languages. And then you can call best. And what that will return for you is the best language for whoever is making the request. So I'm in the United States. So when I'm making a request, it should return English. But if I were in, say, Spain and I was making a request, it will return ES for Spanish. Or if I were in Germany, it will return DE for German. So that's what best does, but you don't always have all the translations available. Let's say your app is only in English and Spanish and someone from Germany were to use your app, it will return Germany for the best, but you wouldn't have those translations, so it would fail. So what you can do is you can pass in the, the best options for the list of languages that you have. So in this case, you would just pass in some keys so it can be something like English, Spanish, German, or whatever you have. So it would be best keys, I believe. Actually, no, it would be best match. I'm thinking of the keys that go in here. So if you use this, you can get the best match of some languages. So. That is one way to determine what the locale is. For now, I'll just pass in English. I'll hard code it because it's a little difficult for me to change the language of my browser each time. It'd be easier if I just show you uh, the different languages directly. So now that I have the locale, what I can now use is the stuff from Flask Babel. So one of the things that Flask Babel allows you to use is format dates. So instead of using the dates from Babel directly, you can use format date here. So I'll remove one just for demonstration purposes. I'll remove the one for German. And if I save that and if I run my app, you see the dates here are different for US date and DE date. And it shouldn't take a locale because the locale is already determined from this get locale function, which needs to be decorated. That's another thing that I forgot. So Babel dot locale selector will determine the locale. So here it's just English, but like I said, you can use best match and get multiple locales. So I'm running again and I see the dates here look exactly the same, but if I change the locale that gets returned, so to DE, and then I look at it again, it changes. And if I change it to something else, so let's say ZH, it changes again or to whatever I want it to be. But I'll change it back to English because I'm dealing with English at the moment. So April 1st, 2007. So that is how format date works and I can do the same thing for format date time. I can't do it for format decimal because it's not in Flask Babel, so you still have to use Babel. So just keep that in mind if you wanna convert these things. So if you use the Flask Babel version, you don't need the locale. If you do use the regular Babel version, then you do need the locale. So just keep that in mind. So the next thing I want to focus on is translations because that's the interesting part about Flask Babel. So first you have to mark what words need to be translated and that's actually fairly simple. 
let's say I had a word here. So I want Anthony as the word. Then I need to mark this as a word that can be translated. So to do that, I simply use get text. So this is from Flask Babel, so I need to import it. So get text. So that is what I use on the Python site. If I want to mark something as being translatable in my template, then I don't use get text, I use something different. So I'll create another header and I'll call this, let's say, computer. So I'm gonna translate the word computer. So computer will be fine right there as just a placeholder. And here I'll have the actual translation of the word computer. So the way you mark it for translation is an underscore and then the regular function parentheses and then the word, so computer. So this is equivalent to get text, but in Jinja is simply underscore because it's a shorthand. So I'll close out the H1 tags. And if I run this, let's see what happens. It just tells me computer. So it's using the original value that is in here. And if the language was different, it would use translations. So let me pass in Anthony to my template. So Anthony equals Anthony. And I'm going to translate Anthony into Spanish. It's going to be Antonio, just as a preview. So this one is a variable that's passed in, so I don't need the underscore because it's being translated on the Python side. So Anthony, Anthony. So you can see that get text doesn't do anything when I don't have any translations. It just leaves it the same. So now, how do you actually create the translations? So to do that is a little more complicated. You have to run some commands from the command line. But uh, once you do that, you'll be able to create the translations. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create a file. So I'll call this babble.cfg. And what this file is going to have is where to look for these marked translations. So for Python, I'm going to specify any file that has .py. And then for Jinja2, which is the version of Jinja that I'm using, I'm going to look in the templates directory for any file that ends with HTML. So that should be pretty straightforward to read. And then there's some extensions I want to cover. It wouldn't matter in this particular case, but this is typical. So let me just add auto escape here. So HTML works correctly and with underscore. So once you have this babble.cfg file, then what you want to do is you want to figure out all the marked names or marked words for a translation. So you're going to run a command on the command line. So when you install Flask Babel, you install something called PyBabel. And what you can do is you can search all the files by looking in the files you just specified, in my case, Python files and Jinja HTML templates. And it's going to find each one that is either get text or that underscore, and it will put them in a file. So the command is PyBabel, then extract, dash f, then babble.cfg, dash o, and then messages.pot. So this is going to extract the translations that are searched for in the files specified by babble.cfg into a file called messages.pot, and then I'll use the current directory, so dot. So it should have created a new file for me. So let's see, I have this messages.pot file. And if I look at it, I see two message IDs. I see Anthony and then I see computer. So those are the two words that I marked for translation. So those are the ones that I'll have to translate. So in this particular file, I don't have to do anything, but that file is going to be used for another file. And that file is the one that generates translations. So what I'll do is I'll run another command. So pybabel init dash I, and then I want to pass in the file that was just generated. So messages.pot dash D and then translations dash L and then the locale that I want for the translations. So in this case, I want Spanish and for however many languages you want, you'll have to do the next few steps for each language. For demonstration purposes, I'll just do Spanish. So ES 
for Spanish. So now it created a new file for me called messages.po. So I put it in a directory called translations. That's what that translations was for in the command. <clears throat> and it's in this new directory. So translations, ES, LC messages, and then messages.po. And then the message string here. So this looks really familiar to the messages.pot. That's because the pot is just a template. In this particular case, this is the actual translations file. And just know if you had like hundreds of words, you wouldn't have to edit this manually like I'm about to do. You can use a program to open up PO files. But since I only have two words that need to be translated, I'll simply modify this one file. So for this particular case, since I'm in the Spanish directory, the message ID is Anthony and the message string for the translation is going to be Antonio. And then computer, I actually don't know what computer in Spanish is. So computer in Spanish. computadora. So I'll just copy that and I'll paste it here in the message string. So once I have that, once I have the translations, then what I want to do is I want to compile them because it doesn't read from that file directly. Instead, it's going to read from a binary file. So to do that, I just run pybabel compile dash D and then I'm looking in the translations folder. And now let's take a look at the folder. It generates a second file, messages.mo, but this is a binary file, so I can't read it. But now that I have those translations done, now my app will automatically look for those translations when I run it. So let me start up my app again. So Python app. And then I'll go back here. So everything is the same for computer and Anthony. But now if I change the locale that's returned here, from English to Spanish, so yes, I will see something different. So now I see Computer Dora, I see Antonio, and of course I see the date changes because uh, the locale is different. But now that it's Spanish, it translates into Spanish. If I wanna change it back to English, then I simply use English and it translates right back. So as you can see in my app, as long as I have the Mark translations, it will automatically pick up the new translations whenever the locale switches. <clears throat> so you just have to generate the messages once you translate them or have someone else translate them. And then you put the files in your app directory and they'll always be there for Flask Babel to pick up and translate. So of course with this, you can have like hundreds of words. I didn't want to do that, but I think two words is enough to demonstrate what's going on. And if you want more than that, then you either use more of these underscore functions or you use more get text. There's a lot more, of course, that can be done in Flask Babel, but I just want to cover the basics. And that's about it. So if you have any questions about Flask Babel and using it, you can just leave a comment down below. I know it can be a little confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not that bad. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. And if you haven't been to my website, prettyprinted.com, you can check it out there. In my Flask Extensions course, I'll cover this extension in a little more detail. So if you want to learn how to use Flask Babel in more detail than what I've shown these two videos, then check out that course. And uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.